Brought to you by Alcafina. <laughs> social butterfly podcast we are here to inspire dreams and help you spread your wings to fly baby girl it's okay to be shy but now it's time to kiss fear goodbye this episode is going to be a special one a little different my video did not work on this episode. So this one is just going to be audio only. So you're going to miss my pretty little face, but you will be back seeing this face next week. Let's get into this episode. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Antisocial Butterfly Podcast. I am your host, Lizzie Correa. If you are a new listener, make yourself known. Make sure you let me know if you came across this episode recently. And make sure before you fly away that you subscribe so you stay alerted every time I upload a new episode. So we have entered a new month, a brand new month. We are in the month of July here in Las Vegas. It is the hottest month of the year. Is it hot where you guys are right now? It seems like nowadays everyone is complaining about the heat. How are you guys keeping cool? I was drinking water. It's been a challenge for me to drink my water, but it is really important that you guys focus to drink more water your body is made of 60 percent water our body needs water especially around the summertime it needs it more than ever even if you are not outside you definitely need to keep hydrated and i'm looking at myself in the camera as i'm saying this so i am really talking to myself here and i want to drink more water now if it's hard for you to drink water do like i said whatever it takes start baby steps how much are you drinking now you know how much that is nobody else knows but you the goal is to reach to half of your body weight in ounces that's how much water you should have and that might seem a lot of water to you so again baby steps really important to keep yourself hydrated keep the skin glowing keep wrinkles at bay whatever it takes make sure you do it for me, I had a motivational water bottle that I bought on Amazon, and where is it now? See, I get ideas, I use it, and sometimes I don't stick to it. It's okay, you have to find what works for you. Maybe that motivational bottle didn't work for me, maybe it did for that moment, but my mind's like, I'm over this already. What else can we do? <laughs> Thank goodness for Crystal Light brand helping your girl drinking water. They have variety packets, they're flavored, this one is a mango peach and it's so good. I want to try all of them. I think the only downfall, if you can consider it a downfall, is that it has five calories. whoop de doo but I can manage, I can manage the calories because I need to drink more water. If you don't know how much water you're drinking, keep a count of it and just drink a little more. We have to love our future selves, love our future bodies. Changing habits is really hard, especially changing and especially incorporating healthy habits. It's really hard. Changing the way we do things, our routine, the way we eat, when we have to change our activities, it seems so much and sometimes that's why we don't start. But it's important to incorporate healthy habits when we are younger because as we only get older, it's going to be harder. For one, once we get into a routine and we're comfortable, we don't want to change. And over time, more years, once you're doing the same thing, you don't want to change that. So it's much harder to change habits once you're comfortable. So if it's hard for you to do any changes, just know that do it now because it's only going to get harder for you down the road. I went to see Joe Rogan this past 4th of July weekend and we happened to book the weekend of Fight Week, which if you guys are UFC fans, you know Fight Week is a whole big thing here in Las Vegas. And here we are going to the Strip going to MGM to see Joe Rogan. I'm sure you guys know, being podcast fans out there, that Joe Rogan is also a comedian. Crazy to think that there's some of you out there that may not know that, but hey, if you guys did not know, surprise, Joe Rogan is also a comedian. I've seen him seven times now. It's so awesome to see how far he has come along with comedy. And he had Tony Hinchcliffe there. Guys, let me tell you, oh, my husband had chose the 
best seats that we could have ever had going to a comedy show. So if you guys have been to MGM and seen any show at the arena there, we had ground level seats and these seats were so freaking cool guys. I low key felt like a badass because we had our own little section for a bar, bathroom, we didn't have to climb the steep stairs, go all the way to the top, go to the bathroom. No, ladies and gentlemen, we had our own little VIP section, it felt like. I'm like, this was so worth the price that we paid. I told my husband, we have to try to buy this section seats every time we are here. And it was such a fun evening. Always love going to shows and doing activities with my husband. He is my best friend friend so august is approaching and august is a special month for us for many reasons it's both of our birthdays and our wedding anniversary and i have that on my mind a lot because of course it's next month and i'm already planning on what to do what to get him we are leo babies joe rogan happens to also be a leo baby his birthday is on august 11th your girl here is on august 16th cutie my little baby girl my puppy who is turning one years old on august 17th and my husband's birthday is on the 18th our wedding anniversary is couple days after on August 20th. Fast approaching. So this year we are doing something so fun for our birthday and anniversary. The place I've never been. We are going somewhere out of the United States. I am pretty excited guys. So let me tell you guys where are we going because I am super excited. Some of my friends who I've told where we are going, they have been so awesome to already recommend us places of where to go and places to see. So I'm super thankful for that. Once I tell you guys where we're going if you guys have been there or recommend places things to do let me know because i already have my list but i always love hearing suggestions from people who've actually been to these places okay so we are going to mexico city and we are also going to this place that i always have to look up because i don't know how to pronounce it ixtapa Ixtapa. I-X-T-A-P-A. Ixtapa is a Pacific Coast beach resort in the Mexican state of Guerrero. Oh, oh, there we go. So it's on a beach resort. Okay, there we go, guys. I'm also staying in a resort. Granite rocks. So they have granite rocks out there. You can jump off, popular dive site. Ooh, you can swim with dolphins there. So it's a laid back resort city that is me right there laid back chill vibes right there oh my gosh i am more excited i didn't know about this in case you guys wanted to know as i'm reading here a little history for you population is 8992 and the resort was created back in the 1970s interesting wow i'm i'm excited we're gonna be staying here for a few days at a resort and then we're going to be staying in beautiful mexico city i say beautiful i already know it's beautiful i haven't even been there i say beautiful like i've been there and there's also this pretty cool show that we ran into called made in mexico and it happens to be based in mexico city perfect timing we watched the whole season unfortunately they only made one season of it all the characters were so awesome and fun to follow. There were some Americans there that moved to Mexico City. And girl, let me tell you, they knew how to speak fluently Spanish and English. They knew how to speak fluently Spanish and English. And their Spanish was so good, much better than mine. Guys, I need to practice on my Spanish. That is definitely something that I've been pushing off, but I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I really don't practice. So I'm a little rusty and of course I'm super shy and I'm not very confident in it. So I have to get over that. So that's another thing I've always been super shy is speaking Spanish. I think in English, I dream in English. So English is my language. Even though my parents would speak to me in Spanish when I was growing up and when I was younger, when I went to school and I learned English, I was running with English. That was me, my parents speaking to me in Spanish and I responding to them in English. And luckily I took Spanish class in high school, which did help me till this day because through that I know how to write and read in Spanish. But let me tell you, if I wanted to carry a full conversation with somebody, it takes me a little bit. I'm not fully, fully 100% confident in it, but 
Hello, we are going to Mexico next month, honey, so you need to practice it. And tell me why I'm embarrassed to even practice it with my husband. Like, come on, he is the person that I should feel the most comfortable with. And here I am feeling shy to speak in Spanish. Like, get over it already, right? Get over it. So I mentioned to you guys that I have already some places in mind that I want to go to when I go to Mexico City. So Definitely want to go to the pyramids. They have amazing pyramids out there. I have never seen a pyramid close up. I've never seen it live. I need to check one out. That's definitely my bucket list. And I know my husband definitely wants to go to there. The pyramids definitely, it's on the list, baby. The second thing that I want to go check out is these beautiful, colorful boats. And you can have a little party on the boats. You can cruise along the canal and garden. So this is the pretty cool thing I love about this boat. So that's why they say a party on the boat. Enjoy beer, tequila, and mezcal on board and learn to make fresh guacamole, which you can enjoy with tortilla chips. Additional food and mariachi music can be purchased from other boat vendors along the way. Oh yes, I saw that in the show Made in Mexico. Excited to do that boat ride. I'm excited to do the resort. I'm excited to go to Mexico, guys. I haven't been outside of the United States since I was a little girl girl. So uh, technically, this is like my first memory of me leaving the United States. I'm excited to be doing it with my baby, my partner in crime. So we are so excited to be spending this birthday and anniversary doing this. And we will take you along the way. I'm going to be recording, vlogging. It's going to be a thing. I'm a big foodie. And of course, my activities are all about where is the good food. So if you guys know some places, let me know. This year, my husband and I will be celebrating 17 years being married. And I am wearing, you guys, the dress. Not my wedding dress, but the dress that I wore when we went to the courthouse before the day before we, our wedding day and this was the dress that i wore at the courthouse it still fits it still fits if i had this dress a little bit before we got married by the court this dress is a, probably a good 18 19 20 years old maybe Crazy thing that I still have it and it's still in good condition because annoying me with items, it would be gone. I was just feeling, you know what, let me just put it on for the episode. I am thinking about my anniversary. I am feeling so grateful every day for my husband and the love and the life that we've been able to share together. Okay, and another thing, can I forget this part of Mexico City? Tell me why low-key Mexico City reminds me and gives me vibes of New York. I love new york i want to go back to new york very soon and when i watched certain videos of things to do there was this beautiful park and i got our airbnb finally and i am so happy that our airbnb is close to this park chap chapu <laughs> i had to break up big words into like chunks just look like my life in small pieces small bites how do we get things done how do we eat an elephant piece by piece Chapu chapultepec 1700 acres okay it's a park this park that i'm having trouble pronouncing has over 217,000 reviews whoa comparing to other parks around the area that is a lot. This park is so pretty. It reminds me of Central Park in New York, hands down. So when I was seeing the show, when I was looking at it on maps, I'm like, oh my God, this gives me vibes of Central Park. And then guess what? And then there's an episode from the show and they referenced that park that it's the Central Park of Mexico City. So this park is commonly called Bosque de Chapultepec in Mexico City. <laughs> and it's one of the largest city parks in the western hemisphere you guys i'm literally learning this stuff with you guys so whoa that's pretty cool this is a pretty big park i look at the photos and it just gives me vibes of new york and another way that it gives me the vibe of new york is the most important means of transport in the city is the metro which is the commonly name for the subway system there needless to say i am beyond excited for this trip i am super grateful to be able to go on this trip and i'm so thankful to be able to spend and create beautiful memories with the love of my life i am definitely counting down the days it's gonna go so fast there's so much to do but i don't want to overwhelm myself i always 
tend to do that. All I gotta worry about is making my list, crossing things off little by little, and sooner than you know it, I will be chilling on the beach somewhere, sipping a pina colada. Oh, and that is another thing I gotta get used to, not just learning, not just brushing up on my Spanish, but you guys, I have to learn how to drink tequila because I normally drink whiskey when I wanna have a good little time, but now it's tequila. Mexico is all about tequila. Luckily, I saw an episode with the Murillo twins. They were on the recent episode of La Platica. And you guys know I love the Murillo twins. I love their vlogs. I love their story. I love their sisterhood. I love the hustle. I love them. And they shared that before they were a drinking Hennessy, which for some reason Hennessy seems so much scarier. And all of a sudden, they were not able to drink Hennessy. It was not available to them. And they recommended a tequila that they absolutely love, that it tastes so good. You don't fuck with Hennessy anymore? No. Oh. And we went to Cancun, and then they don't they don't serve Hennessy over there. So we're like, fuck, like, whatever, tequila. But we wanted to get lit. Let's try it. So I was like, all right, well, we have no other options. We yeah. wanted to get lit. So we got lit off of um, Don Julio 70. And at the time, that was which like is our the, first Which time. is really good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. But I we didn't it. know about it because we were never on tequila and they mentioned this tequila and i'm like okay let me write this down because i'm going to be ordering that tequila when i'm in mexico they said they don't get hangovers and it tastes good i don't know why so there's something about tequila that is just does not go down the throat very smoothly it just wants to come back up it's the taste maybe it's i have to acquire it i just have to get used to it just get over it right just like with spanish practice it just do it. I'm actually gonna put it to test. I'm gonna buy the bottle this weekend or next and see if I like it. For my tequila drinkers out there, ooh, that's gonna be the emoji for this episode is some sort of tequila emoji. What is your guys' favorite tequila? Write it down below. I wanted to share with you guys something that wowed me. Something that wowed me when I came across this episode. I love hearing podcast episodes. I love YouTube content, and I recently ran into this podcast. Now, you guys may know who this fellow podcaster is. I recently just discovered them. His name is Lex Friedman. He is a Russian-born American computer scientist, artificial intelligence researcher, a podcast host, a working and teaching in the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And guess what? His birthday is also in August, pretty close to mine, August 15th. We Leos are just amazing. Super cool that he is a scientist. The first became aware of Lex Freeman through Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan has had him on the podcast. I remember I started liking Lex Friedman when he mentioned about Bobby Lee. He had Bobby Lee's back. He told Joe Rogan that he was a fan of Bobby Lee and encouraged Joe Rogan to have Bobby Lee on his podcast. And fast forward time, I see now Lex Friedman had Joe Rogan on the podcast. You guys, Please check out this podcast. It is so motivational and so inspiring. Think what you may think about Joe Rogan. You always can have your opinion about somebody. I always try to take the good from people. And on this episode, there was so much gold, so many good things to take away, things to remind yourself, things to live by. When I scroll through the bookmarks of this episode, they talk about discipline, they talk about how to handle controversy, also a UFO and aliens for those who like that subject, trust, advice for young people, relationships, which is a good one. This is the part that I wanted to share with you guys. Joe Rogan never talks about his wife. I mean, I don't watch every single content, every single video, but from the content that I've seen, the interviews that I've seen with him, he never talks about his wife. At one point, I even doubted if Joe Rogan had a wife. But he does, and he keeps that private for reasons that I respect. But he mentioned his wife on the episode, and I literally had to stop and pause it and rewind it. I'm like, whoa, 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 did he just mention his wife? So we know she's real. You want to be with someone who's like genuinely kind. That's one of the things that I really love about my wife, and she's very smart, and she works hard. She's like, she's a dedicated, disciplined person, but she's also really nice. That's why one of the things I like the most about her. She's so nice. She's always smiling. And what really touched me 
is what Joe Rogan said about his wife. He took that opportunity to say something so touching. A very man out there would talk about their partner this way. It's so refreshing to see a man talk about his wife in such a good way. And yes, he knows he's being recorded, but he didn't have to say that. I, know, I felt his love for her how he talked about her. He's smiling when he talks about her. Who doesn't want to be around somebody who is always positive and always happy? And people may say, well, that person is just always fake then because life is not always happy. I know, we get that. The beauty of those kinds of people is that they're choosing to be that way. It's a choice. It's a choice to be positive. It's a choice to be that type of person. You're not that type of person automatically. Most of us are not that way automatically. And how beautiful it is that the person that he is always with, the person that he is choosing to go through this crazy life with is someone that is always like that, always happy, always positive. That's awesome. I love that. That was just so beautiful to see the man, Joe Rogan, show some emotions, show a little bit of his heart, talk about something that he usually keeps very private, that's very sacred to him. And sometimes you make your own little narratives, right? You're like, are they really in love? Because he doesn't really talk about her. And here he is having the little hard eyes as he's talking about his wife. I love it. I love sharing things like this. I love love. No matter how long you've been in a relationship, the fact that two people are committing towards each other and choosing each other every single day, that to me is the beautiful story. spread more love, talk about your partner with love. That is it for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe. Leave a comment below your favorite tequila. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for sharing episodes. And if you're sad, just like I am that we are saying goodbye, make sure you check out previous episodes and I will be back next week. Kiss fear. Goodbye.